Janatana Salakaya, Chaksu Um Lavitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Negni Rishesa Sunyavari, Vasyatya De Satarine, Vancha Kalpa Thru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Ve Vajja Patita Ram Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadakar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we have uh, another very holy day today. Actually, there's two celebrations going on. One is the Sri Vishwarupa Mahotsava, where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, takes sannyas and then goes searching for his elder brother, Vishwarupa, who left the family many, many years ago. And uh, it's also the sannyas acceptance of our beloved spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. He took sannyas from Keshava Maharaj in 1959 in the uh, Gaudiamath Temple in Mathura. So we'll speak a little bit about both of these episodes. Briefly, we'll cover the Vishwarupa Mahotsava because Vishwarupa is the elder brother of Lord Chaitanya. He's also an energy of Lord Nityananda. He is actually, he belongs to the Chaturvyuha. Um, he is an incarnation of Sankarshan and uh, he appeared in this world as Lord, uh, as Vishwarupa. The life of Vishwarupa is not so much known because the most of the focus was on Lord Chaitanya. But what we know about Vishwarupa is that um, he spent a lot of time learning Shastra and hearing from uh, Advaita Chari and Shantipur. In fact, he developed an avid desire to learn the Shastras and to uh, preach the Shastras. Uh, his mother, Sachi Mata, the mother of Lord Chaitanya, she had only two sons. We hear from the Shastras how she had eight, what we say, miscarriages before she had Vishwaru. Uh, they were all girls. They all died on childbirth. So now she had a son, Vishwaru, and then, of course, not long after that, the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. But Vishwarup um, was not interested in worldly life. And like an ordinary mother, she's thinking, I have a son, we have to get him married. But Vishwarup lost all interest in the material world, not to speak of the institution of marriage. Hearing from Advaita Charya, he spent practically all his time of life there. At one point, he just disappeared from the world, from, from the scene, and nobody knew. And that was the time where his mother had already made a marriage arrangements for him. Not wanting to get married, he decided to leave the area. Um, he went to an area called uh, Pandarpur. We hear about Pandapur, those of you who are familiar with Pandapur, uh, the beautiful Krishna deity of Vitala is worshipped there by the Vyakalis. Uh, that's in the area of Mahastra, uh, Maharashtra. And those who are in that area, they are Mar Marathis. Um, he spent in the year 1510. Uh, he uh, received sannyas, I believe, from um, 
His sannyas guru was uh, I believe it was Lakshmi Bhakti Tirta. Yeah, it doesn't mention. And uh, it mentions in Sri Chaitanya Mah uh, Sri Chaitanya uh, Charitamrita that uh, Lord Chaitanya after accepting sannyas, uh, went looking for his brother. Uh, it says here that he had gone to South India and that he, I must search for him. Please let me go. So I must tour South India with, with the permission he went. Upon hearing this, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya became agitated, catching the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. He gave his sorrowful reply. The Lord Chaitanya, when he arrived at the place called Sodapur, he had heard from the people there that he had taken samadhi and actually left his body. And of course, being an energy of Lord Nityananda, he transferred himself into the body of Lord Nityananda. And at the same time, he also returned to the spiritual world. Um, this is a little bit about uh, Vishwa Roop. Uh, we don't hear anything more than that. All we know is that Sachi Manta also had feelings of anxiety when Lord Chaitanya herself, himself would go to the house of Advaita Charya and to hear from Advaita Charya about Krishna consciousness about the philosophy of devotional service. She became a little concerned that we had lost one son, now another son is also doing the same. So her mind was a little, was disturbed about that. Later, Lord Chaitanya brought that out, knowing how his mother felt at the time. And of course, when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he went first to the house of uh, Advaita Charya and stayed there for a little bit more than a month. During that time, his friends, his intimate associates, his mother and others came to see him, knowing that he would be now leaving to go to Vrindavan. And Sachi Mata was in so much concern that she would never see her son again. And that is usually the business of a sannyasi. Once he takes sannyasi, he leaves all family ties, everything, all material connections behind and just goes out and travels and preaches. But Sachi Mata, being practically the mother of the universe, she begged her son. She said, Navadweep and Jagannath Puri are like two rooms in the same house. So if you go to Vrindavan, we will never see you again. So please make your residence at Jagannath Puri. Therefore, we will always be able to hear news about you. And so in order to please his mother, the Lord did. Instead of going to Vrindavan as he planned, when she had come to the house of Advaita, to stay there and cook for him before he left, and she offered that prayer and he accepted and of course we know Lord Chaitanya spent 18 years in Jagannath Puri and six more years traveling out of Jagannath Puri through all of India. Well, this is a little bit about uh, Lord Chaitanya's sannyas and a little bit about his brother Vishwaru. Um, there is some statements regarding Vishwarup when he was young. That's mentioned in the Chaitanya Bhagwa, but not very detailed activities of his life are explained in, in, in any Shastra that we know. Of course, there's a big contention, which is still has not been settled. Of course, some people have already settled it in their mind and others have not settled it. And that is that when, when Lord Nityananda became 12 years old, a great saint came to his village in Ekachakra. 
And that saint stayed at the house of Padai Pandit, the father of Lord Nityananda and his mother, Padmavati. He stayed there for some time. And then when he was about to leave, he requested his host for one, uh, one gift. And of course, Haidai Panda being a Brahmin and very much inclined to serve the renounced order, said, whatever you request, I will fulfill your desire. But he didn't know what this sannyasi was about to ask. And the sannyasi hit him with a, with a bombshell that pretty much caused him to leave the world along with his wife. He said, I am a traveling sannyasi. I require an assistant. Please let me take Nit Nittai with me to travel. Nittai was only 12 years old at the time. His father and mother were attached to him more than anything. In fact, the entire village was attached to him. And the idea of Nityananda leaving was just more like, uh, it was better that death would come before that would happen. But he had given his word, and a Brahmin never goes back on his word. And so he was forced to honor his word, and he did. And then Lord Nittai, at 12 years old, immediately left with that sannyasi. Of course, Nittai was willing to go also. And we understand from this that that sannyasi has been a point of discussion for many, many decades, who that sannyasi was. Some people say it was Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, and others say it was the brother of Lord Chaitanya Vishwarup. So there's a good chance it was Vishwarup. Sometimes people say Lakshmi Pati Tirtha was never in that area, so they ruled him out. So it's a good chance that that the older brother of Lord Chaitanya, who was Vishwaru, took sannyas, and he is a manifestation or an energy of Sankarshan. He came to to bring Lord Lord Nityananda ultimately to Lord Chaitanya. And of course, that didn't happen for twenty years later. Lord Nityananda, who was just Nitai, the young boy, traveled with that sannyasi for twenty years before he actually came to Navadweep, stayed at the house of, of uh, the Acharya, and then Lord Chaitanya met him. So Lord Nityananda was 32 years old. Lord Chaitanya was 20 years old when they met at the house of London Acharya in Navadweep. And that's a beautiful, beautiful story. The loving exchanges when they saw each other for the first time in this particular Leela. Okay, now we'll move on to the second part of today's honorary ceremony, and that is the acceptance of Sri Dhanya Sanyas by Asus Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Arupa. Mm. Um, Prabhupada accepted sannyas in 1959. In the year 1945, Srila Prabhupada was still very much involved with his business. And uh, Prabhupada had an unusual dream. Bhakti Siddhanta before appeared to him in the dream saying, Abai, leave home and take sannyas. Abai, our spiritual master, she was awoke in an intensely emotional state, feeling, how is that possible? How can I do that? I have my business, I have my family. And he was thinking. So he remained shaken by the dream, but felt that it was not time. In 1948, Prabhupada had a very flourishing business in a place called Lucknow. Prabhupada was a pharmacist. He was one of the best and most sought after pharmacists in all of India. 
He had developed a reputation and started his own business. And he could even make his own conditions when many of the chemical companies wanted to hire him. He refused many offers and finally started his own business. Prabhupada started a factory in Lucknow, Lucknow and then his business was flourishing like anything. That was in 1948. Gradually, gradually, his family remained in Calcutta, Calcutta, and Prabhupada was traveling on behalf of the business. He was thinking, if I take sannyas, it means I have to give everything up. Prabhupada had five children at the time, three boys and two girls. But his business in Allahabad, that part was starting to fall apart. And then he asked his servant, Goranga, to join him in Lucknow. And then gradually the business in Lucknow, although doing so good for many, many years, started to decline. Again in 1950, Prabhupada had another dream. And this was the same dream. He had several times before Bhakti Siddhartha had come. He now, in this particular dream, it was more clearer than ever. Bhakti Siddhartha was tall, a scholarly looking sannyasi, looked like he came from, strictly from the spiritual world. And Krishna was calling Prabhupada, come take sannyas. Prabhupada said, he urged me to take sannyas. I, I woke, I awoke in a state of wonder was the same instructions he had heard before. Even when he was, his spiritual master was there, he said, if you ever get, get ever get money, print books. And he said, preach in the West. And so by Krishna's arrangement, and Prabhupada saw that gradually everything started to become Change his business was failing, he couldn't even pay his employees anymore. His wife was becoming more and more distant, she was not supportive of his spiritual life. So, everything was becoming what we say changed. Everything that he lived for was now he was being moved to the, to the level of renunciation. And Prabhupada remembers one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam from the 10th canto, 88th chapter, which it says, which Krishna speaks, Yashyaham Alganu Gurnai Harishya Tadanam Sinai Tato Danam Tajak Yasyam Swajana Dukha Dukitam. Krishna says, when I feel especially merciful towards someone, I gradually take away all his material possessions. His friends and relatives then reject this poverty-stricken and most wretched fellow. So we say sometimes if Krishna favors you, he gives you everything. And if he really favors you, he takes everything away. We don't like that so much. We think, oh, all the nice things of this world we should get by the grace of Krishna and devotional service. But if Krishna has a special place for you in his mission, then gradually he will take everything out away. So Prabhupada said, Krishna forced me to take like that. So in 1950, he retired. He said, and he still the business was going, but hardly anything. He was grad, he was just keeping in touch with it. And finally, everything changed. There was nothing left. And he was thinking more and more what he should do. Should he take sannyas? But then he was thinking, 
So many people are taking sannyas nowadays, and most of them, they're all doing it in order to increase their material life so they can get free food and not have to do any kind of labor. And also, they would also meet young girls and take advantage of young girls. So this is, he was seeing that the sannyas ashram was a disgrace. And he didn't want to become a part of that ashram. But then, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was encouraging. So Prabhupada decided, yes, I will take sannyas. So the Gaudiya Math had split into different smaller moths. And the head moth was still at the Chaitanya Math in Mayapur, Navadweep. You can still see it there. That was the headquarters of Bhakti Siddhanta. Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj was actually in charge of the headquarters there. So Prabhupada wrote Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj that Guru Maharaj has asked me to go to the West and preach Krishna consciousness. And so I want to take sannyas. And so please, can you arrange for my sannyas and also give me support so I can go to the West and preach on behalf of Guru Maharaj and the Gaudiya Math. Bhakti Vilas Maharaj had his own ideas, what uh, he said. And Prabhupada said, I have also written a few books. But Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj said, we are also printing some of the books that we have. And it will be good if you come and join us and stay for some time and become, the guru, uh, become part of our institution. He said, uh, and after some time, and when things are, are settled, then we can. He told Prabhupada not to go to the West right now. Don't make any decisions. The Prabhupada couldn't accept that. He could see that Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj and the Gaudiya Math and the Chaitanya Math didn't have funds, and that they still did, they didn't want to support his idea of going to the West. So Prabhupada was sitting alone in Vrindavan for many years. He had renounced his business. He had renounced his family. He had given up everything. So he uh, he understood it, and he turned to uh, to Keshava Maharaj in Mathura. Keshava Maharaj told him, "Abai, take it sannyas immediately." He said, if you're going to preach Krishna consciousness, you must be a sannyasi. No one otherwise, without taking the renounced order, you will not be able to preach. So he insisted. Keshiva Gaudiya Math was located in downtown Madura, and it's described what it looked like. Prabhupada, many years ago, had spent some time, and he was very close to Keshiva Maharaj like that. So Keshava Maharaj agreed to give him sannyas. And on the morning of September 17th, 1959, in the 20, in the 50 by 20 foot 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 deity room on the second floor of the Keshava Mah, a small group of devotees sat before the deities of Lord Chaitanya and Radha Krishna. Abhai sat on a mat besides 90-year-old Sanatan, was also meant to receive sannyas on that day. Sitting opposite the two candidates, Narayan Maharaj, Keshava Maharaj's disciple, prepared to conduct a ceremony of mantras and offering of grains and ghee into the fire. Akinchina Krishna Das Babaji, Abhai's god brother, known for his sweet singing, played Burdunga and sang Vaishnav Bhajan. Sitting on the raised dais, Holiness Keshava Maharaj presided. Narayan Maharaj chanted the mantras and then Keshava Maharaj lectured. Then, to everyone's surprise, Keshava Maharaj asked Abhai to speak. 
Avai did not expect this. As he looked around at the gathering, he understood that the common language was Hindi. Only Keshava Maharaj and a few others spoke English. Yet he knew he must speak in English. After Avai's speech, the thunder, the saffron cloth, and the, the different clo clothing for sannyasis were given. And you can see there's a beautiful photo of Prabhupada, our Prabhupada, who was given the name Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj by Kesava Maharaj, like that. And that was on September 17th. 1959. It's interesting, seven, September 17th, just to divert for a second, is the appearance day of Bhakti Charu Maharaj. He appeared in this world's this 17th of September this year, and Mark was marked, would, would mark the 75th birthday of Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Of course, Maharaj was a great soul, and he departed to return back to the spiritual world. So it's interesting, the day that Srila Prabhupada took sannyas, he appeared on that same day. And this year, that day, September 17th, also begins the holiest of all holiest months, the month of Purushottam Mas. I'll speak some lectures, some information about Purushottam Mas in due course of time within the next couple of weeks. It is even holier than the month of Kartik. And you'll understand why once you hear the description. It's a very special month. All holy, there's no holy days in that month. And the only days that we honor in those at that month are the two ekadasis. All other holy days are stopped, or what we say, put aside. And the month is an insertion in order to, because in order to, for the lunar month years to catch up to the solar years, every 27 months, an extra month is given, and that is Purushottam month. Okay, and so there was one interesting little point that happened during the time when Srila Prabhupada was receiving sannyas from Keshava Maharaj. Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj was chanting sweetly the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And he was chanting, and then, of course, um, it was indicated that he should chant softly because the the mantras that were used for the worship or for the for the yagya were not being heard. So uh, the Kinchana Das Babaji Maharaj started to chant softer, softer. But our Srila Prabhupada turned to the Kinchana Das Babaji Maharaj and then indicated, no, continue to chant loudly. And so Babaji Maharaj did. And Babaji Maharaj later, he said, oh, I could understand that he would be successful in spreading Krishna consciousness everywhere because he had full and complete faith in the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So today is a uh, very honorable day. We honor our Srila Prabhupada for taking sannyas. It's also... Vishwarup Mahotsava. So, uh, if Srila Prabhupada hadn't decided to take sannyas and come to the West, where would the world be today? <laughs> where would we be today? We're deeply in indebted to Srila Prabhupada for, for making this great sacrifice in order to show his uh, compassion for the fallen souls in this very difficult age of Kali, which 
will only become more difficult. I say that with great assurance. From a spiritual point of view, things will get better. From a material point of view, things will get worse. So uh, those of you who have plans on the material side, don't put too much faith in your material plans. <laughs> Because we will see within the next year or so, the economic world situation will be transformed into something completely different than what you see presently. And it's all happening slowly, slowly, slowly. But it will continue to change. Life will go on, but luxuries will stop. Necessities of life will still be available, but the luxuries of life will not. <laughs> and so devotees should see that. Let me live simply. Let me spend my time making whatever arrangements that are necessary to maintain myself and my family and not worry about that so much. <clears throat> the big, the most important thing is to take shelter of Krishna. Taking shelter of Krishna means having complete shelter. Having complete shelter means free from anxiety and fear and confusion. The world is never a nice place. As Prabhupada said, material life is always miserable, but sometimes it becomes more miserable. <laughs> so <laughs> look forward for added material miseries and great spiritual opportunities. <laughs> that's the good part. <laughs> and that's the real good part. Okay. <clears throat> I'll stop here and see if there's any questions or comments. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances. Um, Maharaj, there is a question on the chat. I'll read it out. Okay. I can, uh, let me just, I can hit the chat. What does it mean, Gaudiya Vaishnav? Abhidana. Abhidana. I don't know what that word means, Abhidana. Is it like a lineage? Gaudiya refers to Lord Chaitanya. Gauda. Gauda. Gauda is, means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu means the area of the world, which is Navadvi, it's called Gaudiya. So we are Gaudiya Vaishnavas, there are Sri Vaishnavas, there are various types of Vaishnavas, Madhva Vaishnavas, Vaishnavas in different sects. We are in the Brahma, Gaudiya, Sampradaya. Okay. Gaudiya simply refers to Lord Chaitanya. Anyone else? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All the rest to Srila Prabhupada, all the rest to your holiness. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All the rest to Srila Prabhupada. Hare 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 Hare. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a small request. Um, 
can you um, please talk about uh, talk little bit about uh, Bhadra Purnima? Uh, why distributing Srimad Bhagavatam uh, is auspicious on this day? Uh, can you please? Uh, is it today or tomorrow? Uh, for yeah. us uh, in US, it is today. What is it called? What's the actual? Bhadra Purnima. Well, I actually don't have much you can say. It says that yeah, reading the distributing Srimad Bhagavatam on this day gives great blessings to the receiver and, and added blessings, not just great blessings. To receive Bhagavatam, to hear Bhagavatam, to distribute Bhagavatam, to preach Bhagavatam is always auspicious, but on this day there's added blessings. It's called a Pala Stuti. Pala Stuti means on, the, on certain titis or certain special occasions. This, the, the same act that you perform throughout the year has greater amounts of spiritual benefit on that particular titi. So starting on the third, which is in two days, and going on for about a week, we will speak on the glories of reading Srila Prabhupada's books and especially emphasizing Srimad Bhagavatam. But give, give a gift of a Bhagavatam set to someone today. You have a nice congregation there. And if you do, then everyone becomes benefited, blessed. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, we gifted uh, to our uh, to my sister in India. Wonderful. Thank you. In uh, which language? Uh, in uh, in English only, Guru Maharaj. English. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because kids uh, doesn't know how to uh, read and uh, write uh, uh, Telugu, so we thought <laughs> it would be benefit for kids mostly. They are interested uh, more than my sister, <laughs> so I thought uh, I'll give them on this special occasion. So I gifted. Wonderful, you did great service. Thank you, you don't realize how much, how valuable that service is. To give, to give someone Srimad Bhagavatam is to give them Krishna personally. It's like giving a deity. But a deity you can worship, Srimad Bhagavatam you can worship. And through your worship of Bhagavatam, you can learn everything you need to know and more about Krishna and the process of pure devotional service. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And I want to mention one thing, Guru Maharaj. Uh, like uh, whatever I do, that is all encouragement from my husband. So that's no, uh, no. The, we have to, uh, I, uh, everything credit goes to my Prabhu, Guru Maharaj. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, like, I like when the wives glorify their husbands. It's very rare in Kali Yuga that that happens. <laughs> but when Kelly Guru Maharaj, I, I'm, I'm truly uh, telling that. So whatever I'm uh, doing, um, that is all his uh, encouragement and his <laughs> motivation. Thank you. It's good to hear this, what we say, words of inspiration. Thank you very much. I'm just thankful. You know. You're both very serious in your practice of Krishna consciousness. Continue. And Krishna's mercy is like an unlimited river. It keeps flowing, flowing, flowing. The more you go for the mercy, the more the mercy becomes available. Thank you very much. Hare Thank Krishna. You. Hare Krishna. Hari Hari. Anyone else? Thank you, Janaba. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, may I ask a question that is outside of today's topic, please? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Maharaj, I want to know the difference between um, Sukruti and Piety, if possible, please. Sukriti and piety? Yeah. Well, I don't think there's much difference. I think it's just the one. Sukriti means meritorious acts and piety means the results of such acts. Oh. This is terminology. The piety you receive or the sukriti you receive from performing activities in the mode of goodness are called sukriti. And they they categor they categorize as one as being pious. Okay. Sukriti really means meritorious. That's the actual translation of the word, meritorious. It brings, you know, merit. Piety is a more general term. It applies to a certain uh, level or a certain way of living. One lives a pious life and one performs meritorious deeds. That's Sukriti. Not much difference in terminology. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. You can be pious and then you can do something meritorious. And the results of that meritorious deeds are called Sukriti. Hmm. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> very nice answer. I can understand the, the, the relationship between it now. Thank you. Similar, but slight, slight difference from, from a certain angle. Mm -hmm. hmm. Anyone else? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, no. Yes, uh, today my uh, husband is also listening. Um, do you speak is, that, is, is that Maru Mangal? No, Namruchi Das. Namruchi. Oh, Namruchi, that's right. Your brother in law is Maru Mangal, right? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, Nam Ruchi. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shla Prabhupada. All glories to Shla Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I, I really appreciate um, your sense of pronunciation um, when you speak, especially about the material world. Like, it's very inspiring. I yeah. really appreciate the honesty with which you bring it out. Well, you can look at it from different angles. But when you look at it from the, the highest angle, <coughs> it's a it's just a prison house, it's all it is. It's a place we've been thrown into and now we have to get out. It's like you live your time in jail, and then if you're if you act in good behavior, you get out faster. And so, this material world is simply a, a, a prison house for the soul. And so, 
we're given a, just like you go to prison, you're given a uniform. So they have different color uniforms depending on the kind of prisoner you are. So we get a prison uniform, which is our body. We have a brown body or a white body, a male body, a female. These are all different kinds of prison uniforms. And the soul, which is unlimited, complete knowledge, complete joy, eternally existing, is limited to think that I die, that happiness is something I have to work for, and even if I get it, I'm not happy, and I have to go to school to learn things. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, when you're in jail, all your privileges are somewhat curtailed and taken away. So this is what this place is. It's, it's a prison house. So anybody who really wants to make a nice arrangement in the prison house is not a good, that's not a very good proposal. The idea is to get out. <laughs> get out means to develop a our natural love for Krishna. Loving Krishna is natural. It's not artificial or something that we have to create. It's something we have to just reveal. It's natural to love Krishna. So when that love manifests and reaches perfection, then you're no longer in the material world. And to whatever degree we achieve Krishna consciousness in this life, based on that percentage of attainment, we take another body somewhere in, in the material world, in the higher planets, the lower planets, the middle planets. And then we start from where we left off in our last life. So... The whole idea is you can go towards Krishna by getting a better material situation, or you can go away from Krishna by getting a worse material situation. But in any case, whatever situation you wind up with, if it's still in the material world, it's still within the prison house. So how do you live in the prison house? You know, Well, you have to somehow or other uh, plan to get out and think, how can I uh, maximize my intelligence in such a way that I can shorten my sentence and actually get out of this place? So, and therefore it's all about developing our relationship with Krishna or we might say reawakening that relationship. So while we're in the material world, you sh we should live in such a way that we don't make big arrangements. We do what's necessary to keep the body and the soul together so we can function within the realm of material and then focus our time and attention on Krishna. Those who are trying to make a nice material arrangement are wasting their time and because uh, they could be using their time for making a permanent arrangement. Studying, instead of going from one apartment to another, get your own house. These bodies are like apartments. You, get, you, you live in one apartment for a while and you, know, you move to another apartment. Some apartments are nice, some are not. But if you get your own house, then it's yours. And the only place you can get your own house is a place where uh, you don't have to move anymore. You have your own house, you can stay there. That's the spiritual world. So renunciation is 
part of our process of Krishna consciousness. Rupa Goswami says, uh, Anaya Shakta Nisayam Yeyujam Upayunjate Near Bande Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagi Uchjate. I can read you also something Prabhupada said today. Interesting, it's like today. Prabhupada says a devotee knows how to engage himself and others in the service of Krishna completely, as well as all as all the wealth of the world in the matter of propagating Krishna consciousness. Rest assured. So Prabhupada is speaking to one disciple. The devotee sees everything in relationship to Krishna and tries to use whatever Krishna gives them for the service of Krishna and inspires others to live in the same way. By our example, by our words. You can't stay here, so why make a big arrangement while you're here? <laughs> It's a waste of time. Live simply, uh, and that way you have enough time for practicing Krishna consciousness. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for bringing up the subject. <laughs> yeah, actually, I always um, uh, think of Vishwakarma Prabhu um, mm. because. Um, I have seen many devotees, but his his um, service and his renunciation was very unique. He had a family, but he was uh, he never accumulated money. Very, he was al very... he was always spending his time serving the devotees. That's all he did. Mm -hmm. Yes, my yeah, he's he's like an uh, what they call it in. In, in ordinary terms, the unsung hero, a person who was very renounced and very devoted, but was never recognized in that way, at least by practically everyone. He just did his service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I had, uh, I didn't realize, but you know, I had this great fortune of serving with him because he would cook breakfast and I used to be the breakfast pujari for a long period of time. And um, when, um, like, I think I started appreciating him after he passed away. And um, he, he was not a person who would like, you know, running after money at all. Like all he, all he was always thinking of was how to serve Kishore Kishori and how to serve the devotees. Very unique, very unique soul. But he was, he was absorbed. He never wasted time. He was always, he was always doing his service. Yes, Maharaj. Actually, he, uh, his health was not good. So for a short period of time, I offered to serve him, like serve with him. I could not keep up because he was doing one service after the next, after the next, after the next. And he was um, like, you know, I was getting exhausted. After three days, I could not even keep up with him. And that was when he had like a very severe health issue. Yeah, he loved his service. I, 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 I always knew that he, he was a person who was very special. Because sometimes I would meet him in, in India. Once or twice I met him in, in Mayapur. And I could just see his detachment from everything. Yeah, he was a great soul. What, how long ago was it that he, he left his body? When was that? Uh, he left last um, April. So it's been about a year and a half since he departed. Yes, yes. Mm. Wow, it seems, it seems like yesterday almost. Uh, 
Thank you for that. Anyone else? <laughs> I know. Thank you, Sri Levi. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll stop here and we'll see you all tomorrow. And we'll have our, as our host tomorrow, will be Lavanya, right? Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes. Okay, good. Okay, you'll be our host tomorrow? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank okay. you for the opportunity. I don't know, this is the first time I'm, I'll be doing for you. Um, We're playing musical hosts here. <laughs> <laughs> Three hosts for seven days, okay. Behind every successful woman is a man. <laughs> <laughs> is a guru, that is successful, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that true. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> With all your blessings, Maharaj. Yes, without the mercy, you cannot. Blessings are coming from the great souls. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj, for the lovely class. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful class, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.